The F-22 Raptor is widely understood to be the most capable air superiority fighter on the planet, but an abbreviated production run doomed the Raptor to a short service life, skyrocketing its operating costs and ensuring the US could not replace airframes as they aged out of service or were lost in the fight. Today, there's a new heir to the Raptor's throne in active development known as the next generation air dominance fighter, and the Air Force intends to award a contract for this jet this year. But with these new fighters expected to start entering service by the close of the decade, it'll be years before Uncle Sam has enough sixth generation jets to replace the aging Raptor fleet. And with global tensions at a fever pitch, the US can't afford to sacrifice its air power advantage while it waits for these new fighters to emerge. The F-22 may be slated for retirement, but it has no intention of going gently into that good night. Let's talk about the massive $13 billion F-22 upgrade that's already underway. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. As we've discussed a number of times on this channel before, the F-22 Raptor may be a supremely capable fighter, but because its production run was canceled after just 186 jets were built out of a 750 fighter order, the F-22 Raptor was always doomed to an early retirement. And while Lockheed Martin, the US Air Force, and even Japan have all explored restarting F-22 production, because the vast majority of its supply chain and facilities were canceled cannibalized in favor of F-35 production, doing so would cost almost as much as fielding an even newer sixth generation fighter instead, which is ultimately what the Air Force and Japan both opted to do. As a result, today's Raptors are an endangered species. The 150 or so combat-capable F-22s currently in service are all the combat-ready F-22s this world will ever see. And to make matters even worse, the technological advantage provided by the Raptor's performance and stealth is beginning to erode. China's rapidly growing stealth fighter fleet now outnumbers America's flock of Raptors. And while the F-22 still boasts the advantage in terms of stealth, new counter-stealth technologies like infrared search and track targeting are becoming increasingly ubiquitous across not just fifth-generation fighters, but fourth-generation jets as well. These systems allow fighters to detect and target even stealth aircraft that don't appear on their radar screens using nothing more than their heat signature alone. Now, this technology was fairly new when the Raptor program opted to omit it from production, but today, the F-22 is the only fifth-generation fighter on the planet that lacks this vital capability. The Raptor may be the king of the sky today, but with a sizable NGAD fleet still more than a decade out, the F-22 needs an injection of 21st century technology to extend its reign well into the 2030s. And that is exactly what it's getting. Now these days, the F-35's ongoing Tech Refresh 3 and the Block 4 upgrade to follow are garnering the lion's share of media attention for pretty good reasons, both because of the incredible new capabilities that the upgrade promises to provide, and also because of the seemingly never-ending slew of delays associated with this effort. But America's F-22 fleet is also waist deep in a sprawling multi-billion dollar overhaul meant to ensure it keeps its spot atop the fighter heap while serving as a bridge between today's most advanced fifth generation fighter technology and the sixth generation fighters about to emerge. Now to be clear, a lot of the details regarding these upgrades are still classified, but by sifting through budget documents and media interviews with people involved in the program, we're beginning to get a sense of just what capabilities this newly upgraded Raptor will bring to bear. But before we dive into things like advanced new air-to-air -air missiles, let's start by addressing the F-22's two most glaring weaknesses. 
Because despite the F-22's immense power, data-fusing avionics, and unparalleled stealth, it has long lacked a few capabilities that are prevalent in even older fourth-generation fighters today. The first, as we already discussed, is that lack of infrared search and track targeting. The second is a lack of helmet-cued targeting, which has long limited the way F-22 pilots can leverage the weapons that they carry on board. Now, to be clear, there has been no formal confirmation that these systems are among those included in the ongoing upgrade, but there is growing evidence to suggest that they truly may be. In early 2022, the Air Force released a small business innovation research request to industry partners for proposals for integrating both the Thales Scorpion helmet-mounted display and weapon queuing system and a long-range infrared search and track sensor into the F-22 Raptor. Now, I can't overstate the value of that infrared search and track capability, as it would give the Raptor a huge boost in its ability to engage stealth fighters and a whole lot more. Today's most advanced IRST systems can not only identify and target threats via their heat signatures, but they can even leverage spectral sensitivity to identify the type of threat based on its heat signature alone. These passive targeting systems have steadily increased in both fidelity and range over the past few decades, with modern systems like the Eurofighter's Pirate IRST reportedly able to detect stealth fighters at ranges as far as 30 miles from the front and maybe as far as 55 miles from the rear. Now, to be clear, we're talking generic maximum numbers. This is not necessarily representative of what would happen every time in combat, but nonetheless, this is a serious capability. Now, traditionally speaking, visual range is considered to be any engagement within 20 nautical miles, which is about 23 miles for us non-pirates. Now, that means that many of today's IRST systems are now actually capable of reaching beyond visual range. But as important as the IRST could be for helping the F-22 take on stealth fighters like the J-20, the Scorpion helmet-mounted targeting display could be an even bigger boon for the Raptor's combat capability. Today, F-22 pilots have to actually orient the nose of the fighter toward their opponent in order to lock on and fire. And that really limits the way F-22 pilots can leverage the missiles that they carry on board. Now, the Scorpion helmet would allow the pilot to use their line of sight to target enemy aircraft instead, which in conjunction with extremely aerobatic missiles like the thrust vectoring AIM-9X can even allow pilots to target and engage enemy fighters flying directly behind them. Now, this capability, which we call high off-bore sight targeting, would change the F-22's threat envelope from directly in front of it to literally a sphere all around it, allowing Raptor pilots to finally unlock the full capability set of these modern missiles that are far more maneuverable than any fighter, even the F-22, ever could be. Now, we haven't seen hard confirmation that this system will be integrated in the ongoing upgrades, but it does seem very likely. F-22 pilots have been seen testing these helmets as early as 2014, and the helmet's manufacturer, Thales, already lists the F-22 among the airframes that use its system on their website. Now, it is important to remember that adding these systems will require a fair bit of creativity. The F-22 famously struggled to incorporate the joint helmet-mounted queuing system that's employed by other fighters like the F-15 because of issues mapping the cockpit for spatial awareness and reported concerns about head clearance below the canopy. Now, the Scorpion system, however, has a smaller profile and requires no cockpit mapping to function, using an inertial slash optical hybrid tracker instead to maintain its awareness of head position. But adding IRST capabilities is actually an even bigger challenge. Because stealth aircraft usually integrate things like infrared sensors into their fuselage to avoid carrying the radar reflecting pods commonly found under wing in non-stealth fourth generation jets, adding IRST capabilities to the Raptor would usually require pretty extensive and expensive changes to the jet's airframe. But based on renders released by the U.S. Air Force, it looks like the Raptor's upgrade program has managed to sidestep this limitation by developing stealthy underwing pods instead. In 2022, General Mark Kelly, the commander of the Air Combat Command, posted a render of what America's F-22 Raptors are expected to look like after this ongoing facelift. Prominently featured in that image are two different kinds 
of stealth underwing pods. The smaller outermost pods have been theorized to house advanced new systems like, you guessed it, IRST sensors, new electronic warfare capabilities, and more, serving in the same capacity as pods do on older jets, but with the added stealth required to allow the Raptor to maintain its sneaky profile. The larger inboard pods, however, represent another significant upgrade, not only for the Raptor, but potentially for all American stealth fighters in service today and to come. Now, this is one effort we know for sure is being developed for the F-22's upgrade. It's called the Low Drag Tank and Pylon Program, which aims to field stealthy fuel tanks to replace the F-22's existing non-stealth drop tanks. These angular new fuel tanks could allow for a substantial increase in the Raptor's combat radius without compromising its stealth. And when the time comes to drop these tanks, the pylons are designed to break away clean, leaving no gaps or hardware that could also produce a prominent radar return. Now, this technology could be just the beginning, however, as stealth underwing pods of this sort could also be used in the future to carry additional munitions and more. It seems very likely that while sixth generation fighters are expected to offer greater internal weapon storage, Stealth underwing fuel weapons and electronic pods could allow for even greater versatility in loadouts and, as such, even greater capability sets. If you want to know more about what these stealth fuel tanks could mean for the F-35 in particular, we actually have a whole video breaking that down. And that brings us to Lockheed Martin's AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, or JATM, which may represent the most potent upgrade to the Raptor's long-range combat power that we've addressed so far. This advanced radar-guided air-to-air missile is meant to serve as the successor for the long-standing radar-guided powerhouse that we collectively know as the AMRAM family of missiles. Now, AMRAM is an acronym which stands for Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, but medium range is a bit of a misnomer when it comes to the most advanced iterations of this weapon because they're known to reach well into the triple digits. The AIM-260 effort began in 2017, and to date, there are few hard details about this missile available to the public. The weapon is expected to offer similar dimensions to today's AMRAMs, allowing for easy integration into existing stealth fighters like the F-35 and F-22, while also offering a significant boost in range and aerobatic performance. America's long-serving AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMRAM, both families of missiles, have seen iterative improvements over the years that have dramatically increased their capability sets, resulting in what might be compared to modernized hot rods, using a combination of decades-old design elements and more modern electronics. In recent years, however, firms like Lockheed Martin and Raytheon have begun developing clean sheet missile designs using only the payload capabilities of these stealth fighters as their limitations. The result has been weapons like Raytheon's Peregrine, which is said to match the range and capability of today's AMRAM, but in a package that's less than one half the size. And knowing that Raytheon managed to squeeze triple digit ranges out of a radar guided missile that's only about six feet long and only weighs about 150 pounds, really suggests that the 12 foot long AIM-260 could represent a huge improvement over even today's best radar guided missiles. With a range that's expected to be greater than 120 miles, and maybe even much greater, the AIM-260 could be especially lethal when combined with the Raptor's incredibly powerful AN-APG-77 V1 active electronically scanned array radar. Now, this system may have been eclipsed by the F-35's AN-APG-81 in terms of technological advancement, but the AN-APG-77 is arguably better suited for the air-to-air -air mission, and as such, even better at picking out targets at long range, which means the combination of the F-22 and the AIM-260 could be unparalleled. In fact, there are unconfirmed reports that this missile's capability set is so promising that Air Force officials are saying just having this missile could reduce the number of F-22s they need to maintain the air dominance mission. Looking back today, the decision to cut the F-22's production short appears conspicuously short-sighted. And the hard truth of the matter is, if even 400 of the originally intended 750 Raptors had been built, 
These upgrades, and likely more, would have almost certainly found their way into later production lots. Had that been the case, we probably wouldn't be talking about a new 6th generation replacement for another 10 years or more. But the reality of defense is always a balance of compromise and capability, capacity and congressional popularity. The F-22 Raptor was a victim of America's geopolitical success, emerging as the undisputed king of the sky at a time when the world could muster no real challengers. But now, China has begun production of its J-20s equipped with their intended fifth-generation engines, and continues refining what's expected to be their second stealth fighter for carrier duty. The F-22 now faces the certainty that it would be outnumbered in a fight over the Pacific. But while quantity does have a quality of its own, the endangered F-22 Raptor is continuing to mature and to the fighter it was always meant to be. And if you were to ask my friend Habitual Line Crosser, he'd probably tell you that the Raptor prefers to be outnumbered anyway. Or, to quote Chesty Puller, so they've got us surrounded. Good. Now we can fire in any direction. And with that ends a sort of abbreviated episode of Air Power this week. Sorry guys, I'm dealing with some medical stuff, but I'll be back at full steam next week. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below, and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.